In this video help, I'm going to be covering the sales screen. This is one of the most important screens in this application in that it has the most complexity to it. But I'm going to take some time and go through it slowly so you'll understand how it works. Let's, top, let's go to the top of the screen and start down. Just like on the customer screen, there is a date timestamp. So if you create a sales invoice, you can stamp it with a date for the record when it was created. In this screen, when you create a new invoice, you will be doing it in the lower part of the screen. Now, you're actually creating what I call an invoice input. These are different rows of data that you're putting in based on inventory that's found in the inventory screen. And what you're going to be doing is adding something that has a product code, a product name. If there is a discount that you're offering on it, on a line-by-line -line basis, you would put a dollar value in there to reduce the price. There's a quantity of how many you're selling. There's a little uh, kind of a thing where you see where it's yellow on the screen. When you actually add a value in here, if you set up a standard cost within the inventory screen and you just click on this, it'll bring over the standard cost. You still have the option after you click on it to go ahead and edit it and change the price if you need to. The next thing is the sales uh, tax. On sales tax, you use your local area tax that you're going to be doing, the combined tax for if it's city and uh, state. And you put the percentage rate in there. This is a drop down, so you can pick it. And like I explained before, in this case, there's a tax rate uh, screen with an underlined uh, header, that means that there's a different screen. Let's just pop over there and take a look at that. The way this works, you would add a new record for any new value that you're using for an interest rate, uh, for tax rate. And the way you would do that is click in here, go ahead and type into this space or up on the top, and say for example we're doing 0.0569 as a tax, just under 6%. That would go into the screen and it would be in there 0.0569. You can use a 0% when you don't want to put anything in or zero it out or you can put the information in here. Now if you want to edit this, you click on it and it'll bring that one up. If you wanted to edit this one, you can bring that one up. Uh, you can go automatically back to sales from here or you go to inventory or the main menu. Let's go back to sales. If you go back to the same screen that you left from, it'll go back to the exact same record that you're working within. The next thing you want to do as far as setting up the screen is to take a look at the actual tax. This is calculated by the quantity and the rate based on the cost. And this in this case is $11.03 tax. Now you do not have to add a tax like I was saying a few seconds ago. If you pick zero, you can put zero tax in there. And obviously it automatically updates so you can see that it, there is no tax. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use the new tax that we did. And you'll see that it puts in a lesser tax at $7.96. What will happen, as soon as you finish this calculation, it automatically line totals the sum at the end of the row. But I'm going to back up a little bit just to show you something. Uh, from the inventory screen when we're setting up the record, when we click into a space, you'll see that there's a bunch of records in here. And these are inventory items. Now, for testing purposes, not everything has the, the description of the name in the item. But if you look at this, you'll see that it has a abbreviated code as you can see at the top of the screen it has what it actually is it's a carrier for a diaper bag and it's in blue and it's for the store in this case is NT or the nut tree above and it'll actually have the, the standard price listed at the end of that number so this is $139.95 but I'm just going to go ahead and for the next row pick this item and you'll see when I pick it it automatically drops the uh, product name in the area in this case, I'm going to discount it by $2. And when I click into this area, after I put in the quantity that I'm going to be putting in, I'm going to say I'm going to put 2 in there, and then click, and it'll put the 68 in there. It automatically goes to a sum total, and then I'm going to put in my tax, and it'll automatically calculate the tax. Now, in this particular case, it raised the value of the actual items that we're purchasing. Now, you notice at the top, it was calculating as we added a new line summary. Uh, the, I'm going to back up once more and say that uh, if you take a look at the information on here, this record was already created. 
but I'm going to indicate that when the record is created, it's going to date and timestamp the actual record. Then this can be edited by you, but these are not editable. This is like a uh, safety valve to keep people from changing the invoice after it was originally created. And you can tell that it should not be uh, any different from here. It should be not earlier than, but that it could be later than on here as far as the actual date and time. Uh, each uh, item as it, or invoice as it's added gets an, its own individual invoice number. And of course, it's because this is a, new, a parent record, you have to create it by cl clicking on new and it'll sequence that number to the next number for the next new invoice. Now let's make things a little easy. If you're looking for the client, if you have the client in your database already, you would just go ahead and click on their name and it would fill in the, the information. In this case, it was Carol Jones and her address and location. This is information that will show up on the invoice. Now, if you need to go back to the client information, you can jump over to customer and add a customer and come right back here. The yellow behind this means that there is a drop down here that you're picking from and it fills in all the fields to the right. So you don't have to do that. The next thing we're going to be doing is if you had to go to the sales location screen, you could click on the underlying sales location and you could edit this area. And in this case, I'm going to put in the nut tree. And in this case, there's also another one in here. And this has got the, for the salesperson that actually took this order, it has the names of the salespeople in the, uh, the database. And you can change that. Let's just pop over there real quick. This is another uh, one that looks just like the one we were just looking at, where you can actually edit and add by adding a new record. You can add another new salesperson. Uh, do not delete the people in this screen. Uh, you can keep them in there or you can change them uh, if you had to edit it. But what happens is when you actually use the name, if you delete it, it also takes it out of the list and it also will, may take the people, people's name out of here so you don't want to do that on the ones that are actually in there. Now, uh, one of the things I want to point out here too is that you can edit in a regular type of a screen but on the iPad, you're not going to be able to edit these unless you use the link that takes you over to the salesperson's input list. Uh, there is an icon in this particular area right here. If you right click on it, you'll get a thing that says insert picture and you can insert a picture from your hard drive or from the iPad library as far as putting a picture. And that would be in this case, a logo that would be on the invoice. And that's what this particular field is for. This shows up in a couple different locations as far as where the logo is. Now, each store, when you put in the store location, it will change the logo. So if I went to the web, instead of logo here, you can see it disappears. If there was a web store logo, you could put that in there, and then that's what would show up on the invoice. So it's just a matter of which one you want to have in there. Now, interestingly enough, uh, as you're doing this application, uh, like I said before, this is a Swiss army knife and has a lot of capability. Uh, you do not have to use this particular thing, but what it does is if you click on this little field here, it does a pop-up and you can add comments for the pop-over that describes any comment uh, about the line item in the row and with the line and click it off of it, hides it. You could say, for example, is this a quote? Is it a a special function or a feature or something you have to do to modify uh, the record for some reason later on. Maybe it was a uh, special delivery or it could be somebody wants to put a down payment or a, uh, a layaway. You have all those options by using this screen as far as tagging that row to whatever uh, information you want to put into it. If you delete the row in the portal, it also deletes all the information that was in this record. It does not delete the inventory item. It only deletes the record for that row. So if I clicked on this record here and I decided I wanted to get rid of it, I could click this red button up here and it deletes this record. That would remove it from the uh, portal record. In this case, I'm going to go back and I'm going to say, okay, now let's say we're going to go for a payment. The way the payment works, you look in the green field here, and this is the sum balance that's owed on this particular invoice. What you would do is the 289.54 will also show up on this screen when you're making a payment. So if the person is ma making a payment, you would put in the amount that they're going to pay. And the way you do that, this is a locked field where it puts the, uh, the portal ID in, 
what we're going to do is we're going to put and say they made the payment today and the amount due is 289.54 so I'm going to put that in there 89.54 and that tells us that that's the amount that's due now what did they pay if you put a lesser amount than the actual amount it's going to give you a balance of the amount that needs to be retained if this is the amount of the balance so I'm just going to do it real quick just to say I'm going to put in $200 just so you can see it work there's an $89.54 balance so what happens here is that they still owe money if you're going to pay a net they're going to pay another amount later on you would put the date in the 89.54 you'd either pay it off or have another payment on it and you can do that until the actual invoice is totally paid for now kind of a nice little uh, extra that is in here is that if you receive say for example the person gives you two hundred and ninety dollars for example let's go back and change this so we can see how it works 289.54 is what they're that they're going to pay today, and the amount that they gave us was two two hundred ninety dollars. So in this case, we owe them forty six cents in change. So this is a cash received if it's a cash payment, and then the amount that you can make the change for the receipt. This just helps you really quickly to know when you're in your cash drawer what you need to pull. You'll notice that it went to zero as far as the sum of the balance. It showed the sum paid, and it shows you the invoice total, the tax and obviously the base or subtotal that all this is calculated into. Now, let's do the paid with. In this case, it could be a credit card, cash, or anything. You could go ahead and put that in there, and then paid with would be put in there. And then in the case of, say, like it's a credit card, uh, it's a good idea to put the last four digits of the credit card, or in the case of a check, put the full check number of the check in there. Uh, if I'm going to click on this, I would get the payment portal, and that would show on the screen. And it just shows you the transaction. And these can be searched on if you need to, to uh, handle uh, the payments and information about the payments. Let's go ahead and click back on sales to return to the record. And now, what have we not done? We could do a find if we needed to in this screen based on any of the information at the top, but not within a portal. Portal records are not searchable unless you're in the actual portal record I just showed you. And if you're in here and you're looking for a specific invoice number or, say, for example, a, uh, a store location or the salesperson, or in the case up here, you could be looking for the individual uh, who uh, was paying the invoice. And you can do this on any field or you can combine any fields in order to get that information. You can also do a date range. And I'm going to explain that. If you click in and then click again, there's a formula which is explained on the main menu how to do uh, searches for uh, date ranges. But you could say, I want to get a date range for this client by their name, and you put their name up there in the find, and then you put in the, uh, the date range. And I'll explain that uh, again in, in the, another uh, section of this thing. Now, uh, we did the payment. We did the sales invoice. Now, let's say, for example, I wanted to look at all the inventory that is listed in the, uh, the, the inventory system and also see what the stock balance is and the standard price and the low level. In this case, uh, not all the records have the data in it yet because this is primary data that's being added just for testing. But you can see in the first couple of records that this particular uh, item has been ordered before and this one has not. So there's a minus number in here. And in this case, that means there's a demand that's put on purchasing to provide the item that is not in stock at this time. Another nice thing about this is when it says stock location, what it's actually talking about is the store where it's actually being stocked or inventoried. So if you have multiple stores, you'll see, for example, it repeated the same item, but one would be at one store, one might be at another store. And it would give you all the information based on that. This is done when you create the inventory items, you itemize the item by which store it's going to. And the same thing when you're in the purchase screen, you add the information based on the actual store that's making the purchase. And we'll cover that later. Uh, this can actually take you, if you click on this, to the actual stock item in the inventory if you wanted to go over and do an adjustment or whatever on the inventory item that's listed in the row. This pretty well takes care of this base screen, but I want to point out some other things on this screen. There is a, uh, let's go back to the main tab so you can watch the data. Uh, there's a show print invoice, which is the actual invoice, which will be covered in a separate video. 
There's a daily sales by store, which is a special report by the sales within a store by whatever day or date range that you want to look at it. So you can alter that by doing a find. Then there's a sales by product by using the product name and ID in order to locate sales of a particular item to summarize or to look at a date range of when sales occurred on that product. Then there's an inventory by store. And basically what the inventory by store does is it shows you the items in each store based on the inventory item and product code. Down here is a special uh, setup, and this is for the cash drawer, uh, cash register uh, uh, management. And if you have multiple employees working with one or more cash registers, you can actually track all the information and summarize it in a report where what it's going to do is it's going to take the cash drawer that's assigned to the person. They're going to be the check-in time, the cashier, the amount that they actually had in the cash drawer when they started their, their uh, individual uh, time on using that particular cash drawer. And the report will allow you to take money out of the drawer during the process of the day if you needed to, if there was too much money in the drawer and you didn't want to leave it in there. Uh, you can also uh, take and summarize the information at the end of the day by individual employees and their cash drawers. Or in the case of where you have only one cash drawer all day long, you can cash it out at the end of the day and summarize all the bills and change and credit cards. And all that data would be summarized in a report. So you can see day-to-day -day summarization of all cash transactions down to the employee that's actually taking in the money. Now, this report is restricted. And what it means by restricted is that if you're going to use this cash report, you need to have a password. This password is provided to management people when you purchase this application. And you would type, first of all, that enter the password here and then click this button. And what it's going to do, it's going to show a dialog at the top of the screen explaining this is a restricted report. That's so if somebody clicks on this and uh, wants to try to get in the cash report, unless they have a password, it's not going to allow them in there. That is all explained in this video and it explains the report and how it works as far as using the cash drawer cash out. Uh, up at the top of the screen, coming back up, this does have a list view, and it'll list all the invoice items as far as the invoices themselves by their number and, and the amount of uh, the invoice and the person to which the invoice was written for. There are uh, links to the inventory, customer, main menu, and the account ledger for sales. And this will all be covered separately as far as the account ledger and the inventory. There will be different videos to show you how to use that. Now, as before, if you have questions and you need help, go ahead and contact me by clicking on the support site and taking either a email or and or you can call me on Skype to get a walkthrough of any questions you might have. Thank you.